first hymn this morning is hymn number 225. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Let's stand and sing together. 225. so glad to have you here this morning uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer our gracious Heavenly Father we just thank you for this morning that you've given to us just the opportunity to be here in your house Lord we just ask that you'll be with us this morning we uh, pray that you'll be with every aspect of the service the music the offering the special the message Lord um, just thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ for us Lord and we just ask that you will be with us here in this time in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, um, as you know, uh, Pastor and Diane are on vacation, and uh, they're back in Arizona, so um, you have us for right now. So, uh, But anyways, we have a few announcements to uh, uh, go over this morning, and, I, and I, think, I, I think last week we didn't even put in the bulletin that I'd be preaching, so that's probably a good thing, because we probably have less people here this morning, so I'm glad that we didn't put that in there. But anyways, um, this this Thursday uh, night for Bible study, we, we will have our Thursday night Bible study this Thursday. And then the following week, the 28th, we will not have our Thursday night Bible study. So this Thursday we'll have it, the 28th we will not, okay? And then a new Bible study begins in the new year for our teens. Uh, Pastor Sturzbox is going to be teaching this class for our teens, and that's going to be at 930. Um, next week we'll announce where that will be. Uh, but he's going to be handling that for our teenagers, so our teens should be excited and looking forward to that. And then next week is Christmas Eve, and we're going to do things just uh, just a little different, okay? We're not going to have Sunday school, okay? Um, we're still going to have our morning service at 1030, but instead for Sunday school, we're going to have a continental breakfast, okay? So we just want everybody to come at 930. Uh, we'll have food, right? That's always a great thing. And, and we're going to have just a time of fellowship before the service. 
And then after the service, we're just we're just going to dismiss and go home. So we're going to do the Connell breakfast for Sunday school as our time of fellowship instead of after the service because we know that on Christmas Eve there's there's family, there's meals, there's things you want to do, and so we want to sort of get you on your way to so you can give your attention to those things and and not have to you know just make it smoother for you on that day. So that's our plan. So. With that being said, if you would like to contribute to the breakfast that morning, please see me. Um, I'm going to be heading it up. And uh, if you want to bring something on that morning, please let me know so that we can make note of it. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, I look forward to any time there's food. All right. So our Christmas Eve service will begin at 1030 a.m. next week. So we just ask that you invite your friends and family to come for that. But 930 instead of Sunday school. We'll have the breakfast. All right, at this time, Brother Logan's going to come up, lead us in 227 Park the Herald Angels Singing. <clears throat> Glory to the newborn king. 227. <laughs> chapter of the Old Testament it does promise a Messiah to come so we'll look uh, we'll read that together as I read the first verse and then you can read the, the following for behold the day is coming burning like an oven and all the proud yes all who do wickedly will be stubble and the day which is coming shall burn them up says the Lord of hosts that will leave them neither root nor branch you shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet <laughs> on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. You remember the law of Moses, which I commanded him in order for all his Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. 
meant. This is God's will. We know he did send uh, Elijah. That, that was John the Baptist. And we do know that Jesus did uh, fulfill all the things that he has promised to do. Next, 236. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap? 236. <laughs> offering time, I just uh, just want to thank you again for your faithfulness in this area of your tithes and offerings. The Lord continues to provide, and that is through your faithfulness, and I just want to encourage you to continue doing that. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this morning that you've given to us. Father, we just ask that you give this offering time, Lord. Use it to meet the needs of our ministry, Lord, and just help us to remember that the, the, the gift, the tithe, the offering that we give is just not for an immediate purpose, but it's for an eternal purpose uh, to be used for honor and glory to you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us in your name. Amen. Amen.
Our last song before the message this morning is school number 226. A little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. Let's stand and sing this together. 226 in your hands. <laughs> you all here this morning. Uh, yes, I am bringing the message this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you turn to Luke chapter 2, we're going to read verses 15 through 20 this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. And I would just, uh, one thing I want to mention is um, if, if you're going to help out with the breakfast uh, next week, um, I just want to let you know ahead of time, uh, Jenny Logan is making her famous monkey bread. So I'm excited about that. And then uh, we're gonna we're gonna pick up uh, some Val and I we're gonna get bagels from uh, Panera so we'll we'll have a variety uh, if there's one you want let me know and I'll make sure I get it for you I'll be happy to do it and save it for you but I just want to let you know that that's what we're gonna have and so if you're gonna help out that gives you an idea of what you might want to provide that morning um, in Luke chapter two verses fifteen through twenty um, the the message is more we're gonna look at the the shepherds. Uh, in the passage here. We're going to learn some lessons from the shepherds here this morning. But Luke chapter 2 verses 15 through 20 says this, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to, unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, and saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told um, to them. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this time that we could be here this morning to open your word. Lord, I, I ask you this morning that you be with me, that you will control every thought in my mind and every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord. I ask that you fill me with your spirit, use me this morning. And Lord, at the end of this message, may we leave here saying, what a great and mighty God we serve. In your name, amen. amen. I think a lot of times when we think of Christmas story, immediately uh, comes to mind we're drawn to Joseph and Mary there in Bethlehem and, and the manger, and, 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 and that's what comes to mind. And, and I think the second thing that comes to mind is the, the, the wise men, right? Bringing the gifts to, to Jesus. And, and uh, we know that historically the, the, the wise men were not there at the time when Jesus was born. They, they saw Jesus a couple years after he was born, if you uh, want to keep things in historic uh, uh, line there. But a lot of times that's what's, what's drawn to us, right? Um, you know, in our, our front yard, we, we, we have penguins galore. And, and, and if you've been by there, you know, you've seen it. And, uh, and to be honest with you, we, we, at one time, all we had were penguins. And uh, my neighbor, who, who I, who's a, a, a fellow believer, he's, he's strong, he's, he's faithful in his church. One, one Saturday when I was putting up all my penguins, he came up to me and he says, hey, Man, I am so glad you're putting all these penguins up. I just got to tell you something. I don't remember penguins being in the Bible. And I just said, you know, you're absolutely right. So we, we got an inflatable manger, and it's right in the center. And then the penguins all are around the manger. So he put us, uh, straightened us out there. But um, again, when we think of Christmas, we think of those things, right? So this morning, let's let's take a few minutes and let's let's talk about another group of people there was there that night in, in Bethlehem, uh, a group that is really not talked about. They're mentioned right in, in the scripture, but it's it's let's talk about the shepherds and and what part they had and what are some lessons that we can learn from the shepherds this morning by the way that they heard, the way that they reacted to the news, and what they did as a result of. I remember um, when my oldest brother announced that his wife was pregnant, right? My parents were excited because it was the first grandchild. Me, I was excited because I was going to be an uncle for the first time, right? So we heard that announcement. We were excited. And I remember the way that we heard the message was a message was left on our answer machine. You know that thing, you press it and then it goes, you have nine messages that have not been listened to. Do you want to hear it? So you press it and you hear that long beeping noise, you know, and then ring it and then it plays the messages. And, and you, of course, we heard the announcement that uh, uh, my, my sister-in-law was pregnant and I was going to become an uncle and I was excited. And I just remember that so much. But, you know, when we look at how God presented the announcement to the shepherds. God had a different plan. God did not choose a, a, a lot of uh, specialty. He didn't. He didn't uh, introduce us in a in a flashy way. Uh, the birth or announcement of Jesus was delivered by a nondescript group of shepherds, just a group of men that were out doing what they were supposed to be doing, taking shepherd, taking care of the sheep. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that for a moment, too. The announcement of the birth of Jesus, God in the flesh, made by angels, delivered to a group of lowly shepherds. Though lowly in the eyes of men, though overlooked by a majority of society in those days, because shepherds were not like, you know, the, the job that everybody wanted to do. These shepherds were given the announcement from the angels of the birth of Jesus Christ, from doubtly men of high and holy character and you say well why do you say that well as we talk about them and how they went about hearing the announcements you will see this as we develop it now while we don't know what they did prior to this announcement we do know from God's word what the shepherds did after the announcement we know a great deal about these shepherds because of their outstanding conduct and reaction to the announcement from the angels about the birth of Jesus Christ 
And their response was behavior that revealed much faith in and respect for God, God's word, and God's son. So the idea here is we, we wish to be people of outstanding character. We need to reveal our faith in and respect for God, for his word, and God's son. We need to believe God in his word, but our lives must also reveal that we believe God and his word. And we even talked about that in our science school class this morning. If you look at Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let, this morning, let's take a look at three major actions by the shepherds when they heard the announcement. These unknown and appreciated shepherds and these three actions that reveal what they were truly made of. So the first action is the shepherds believe the truth. If you look at Luke chapter 2 verse 15 it says and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. When God gave his message to the shepherds by the heavenly messengers the shepherds didn't scoff they didn't doubt they didn't question these shepherds believed the word of God and they went to go. If you notice that phrase, haste, they went. Nothing stopped them. They didn't stop to think, well, uh, you know, well, let's, let's, uh, let's wait till the, the sheep are done grazing here and then we put them back. I mean, I, I don't know if they got someone else responsible to watch the sheep from that point on, but I do know they reacted immediately to the announcement. And we too need to believe the word of God. Every chapter, every verse, every line, God's word is true. We need to believe God's word like the shepherds believed it. We need to build our lives and homes on God's word as well. So few people really believe God and his word. But the shepherds did believe God and his word and they believed God's word immediately. They were obedient. God, God helped us to read his word, to study his word, to meditate on his, meditate on his word, and immediately believe God's word. To believe God's word says about eternity and salvation, to believe what God's word says about life. And I hope this year, as we're coming to the end of this year, and we're starting a new year, that we will begin to set some spiritual goals for 2024. It may be, hey, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read my Bible through again. I didn't get it through this whole year, but I'm going to try again to get through it. Hey, that's a great goal. And by the way, don't let what you did this year keep you from trying to do something good next year. Don't let yourself get down and say, well, I, I tried to start reading my Bible through the year and I just, you know, I just can't finish it. Why should I start again? That is the devil talking to you. He is trying to discourage you from being in God's word. I mean, think about this for a minute. We're saved. We know we're on our way to heaven. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, there's no doubt you know that you're on your way to heaven. So the devil can't have your soul, right? He can't have that. The only thing he can do is keep you from developing into the Christian that you need to be for the Lord's work. So if he can discourage you from reading his word every day, he's got you. If he can discourage you from praying every day, thinking, oh, I, I pray and, and, and nothing gets answered, he's got you. And that is the devil's biggest lie, is to keep you from being who you need to be, keep you from having the walk with the Lord that you need to have. And he'll do that by lies and deception, by saying, oh, you started that before, and you're not going to finish. Don't fall into that trap. I pray that we'll set some spiritual goals for 2024. So you asked, how do I know that the shepherds believe the message they received, right? The answer is, the shepherds believed and they proved their belief when they acted upon what they believed. Look at, look at Luke chapter 2, verse 16. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. You see, if the shepherds had made no attempt to see Christ, we would be justified in questioning their belief, right? 
I mean, if we, if we would have said, well, you know, three weeks later, they went to go see the baby Jesus, we would say, well, they didn't really believe what the angels had told them. But they went and believed. That gives you the idea of how you and I should take God's word when it's spoken to us and he tells us something we should do. We should make haste and obey it immediately. Let us be sure that our lives demonstrate our belief and trust in God. Our lives ought to produce the fruit of one who sincerely loves God and wants to live with him, for him with all our hearts. Our lives ought to clearly reveal the fact that we love God and are doing our very best to please him and to obey him. That phrase, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? If we do this, it will be clear. People will know if we are truly living our lives to follow and obey God if we're doing this. He will direct our paths, but we need to follow him. Would God that all of us have the faith that the shepherds have to strive to obey God in whatever he's called us to do, or whatever he would have us to do, to have the heart that when God speaks in our hearts that we will obey him. And by the way, please notice that they went immediately. They said, let us go now. They, 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 they weren't hesitant. They said, let us go now. And by the way, delay <laughs> I'm going to throw this at you, is not faith. Delay is disobedience. And delay reflects doubt in your life. It is not, it was, it was night, and these shepherds could have easily put off their journey until the morning, yet the shepherds chose to obey God immediately. Procrastinators can always find reasons for not obeying, and I've done that myself in my own life. I have found reasons to disobey something that God has told me I should do and, and we've all fallen into that trap but God is not looking for excuses God is looking for immediate obedience because that's what he asks and most often it's not that we don't know what we should do the question is are we willing to do what we know we should do when we're shown by God's word this is what we should do dedication doesn't look for excuses but for opportunities Dedication does not look for alibis, but for ways and means. Let me ask you, what has God asked you to do that we have put off for whatever reason and have failed to submit to him to do as he has asked us to do and spoken to our heart through his word? And we know that he wants us to do. We really need to do it. There may be someone here this morning that you've been struggling with salvation. You know what you should do, but, but let me ask you, let me encourage you that if you're not for sure, you're 100% for sure you're on your way to heaven, I beg you not to leave this room this morning until you know that. That is the greatest gift you could ever receive. If there's someone listening online this morning and you, for, you don't know for sure you're on the way to heaven, I beg you that you will know today that you're on your way to heaven by trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The shepherds believed the truth, and because they believed the truth, they beheld the truth. Luke 2, 16 says, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The simple faith of these shepherds brought a rich reward. They had the incredible privilege of being the first of mankind, after Mary and Joseph, to see with believing eyes the newborn Messiah. As far as we know, they were the next people that saw Jesus there in the manger, besides Mary and Joseph. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And this is the truth, and I thank the Lord for this today. The shepherds believed the truth, and they acted on it. Second point this morning is the shepherds shared the truth. The shepherds shared the truth. Seeing that Jesus at the manger in Bethlehem was not the end of the story for the shepherds, after they saw him, they became they began to proclaim the good news about Christ, right? They went there, they saw the manger, they saw Jesus, and immediately it says they went out and they proclaimed what they had seen. These men would have been considered by most to be at the very bottom of the social scale in Israel, had no incredible privilege of being the first proclaimers of the newborn king. I mean, they would have been the last people, the last group to be able to bring this great announcement to everybody. But you see, these shepherds took advantage of the opportunity that God had given them. 
And because they took advantage of the opportunity that God had given them, they were given an even greater opportunity. So often those who complain about being used in God's service may simply have failed to use spiritual opportunities and advantages that have come their way earlier. If we're not faithful in that which is least, how, God, how can God trust us with more and greater responsibilities? God help us to take advantage of the opportunities that God has presently given to us. We've got Sunday school, we've got services for God, we have other opportunities here for service at our church. Even the, the opportunity to maybe even witness to our neighbors, to pass out tracts. These are opportunities that the Lord has given us that we should take advantage of. Psalm 75, 6 says this, From a promotion cometh either from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. 75, verse 7 says this, But God is the judge, and he put it down one, and set it up another. God help us to be a witness for him at every opportunity we possibly have. To do everything we can by every means to let people know about Christ. I mean, just think about this for a minute. You know what Christ has done for you in your life. How he has changed you. Has he changed the lives around people around you? Wouldn't we want to share that with others? And I know that some of us are, 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 are afraid maybe to speak, and, and I get it, I understand. But maybe just passing a track, leaving a track, that's a way of witness. There's many ways to witness. And I honestly, if you, if you just ask the Lord, you said, Lord, I, I, I want to be able to share the gospel, but I just don't know how. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm shy. I guarantee you, the Lord will show you a way to work within your ability to share the gospel. I'm almost sure of that. I was just thinking about this for a minute. What if, let's just say, we as a church body just said, hey, you know what, we, we are going to just start passing out tracts. Not, not even try to say anything, but we just started passing out tracts as a, a church group. And then at some point after we decide to pass out tracks, one day you're going to pass out a track and someone says, you know what? <laughs> I've already received one of those from somebody from your church a few weeks ago. Since this is the second one, I, I think I'll take it as a hint. I should be in church this Sunday, so I'll be there. Wouldn't that be amazing if that happened? I mean, that would be great. I'd be like, I'd be jumping hallelujah, you know, with that person there. And then they might say, well, I'm not sure I'm going to come to church now, you know, because I feel a little excited. But could you imagine that? That would be awesome. That would be amazing. But the thing is, we have the greatest news ever told, right? We have what this dying world so desperately needs, and that's the truth of Jesus Christ and what he can give to the individual. Amen. And are we going to do our best to share it with them? If not you, then who? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? I, I, I think at Christmas time, right, we're all about giving gifts, and, and I'm all about giving gifts, and I'll be honest with you, I'm about receiving gifts too. I'm just not going to be shy about that, right? I mean, we all are, right? But the greatest gift that we could give to anybody is sharing the truth, isn't it? That's the greatest gift. And the thing is, each and every one of us Well, I, I believe that Jesus is, Jesus Christ is God. He died. He was buried. He rose again the third day. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. That is absolutely wonderful. But could we ask ourselves, including this guy talking this morning, and I mean this, have we shared it with anybody? I mean, it, I'll be honest with you. I have not been as faithful in this area as I should be. And I'm, I'm talking to the Lord saying, Lord, you need to convict this heart right here. And you need to, you need to convict me because I need to share the gospel more than I've been sharing in my life up to this point. Because it's the greatest truth that's ever been known to me. The shepherds believe the truth. The shepherds share the truth. And then the last point this morning, 
This is shepherds who live the truth. Luke 2 20 says this, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and it was told unto them. Once the shepherds had the privilege to see Jesus Christ, they returned to their duties as shepherds. They went back to doing what they were supposed to be doing. The shepherds were faithful at their duties. They didn't say, well, we were selected from among all the people living in the world today and we have personally witnessed something never before seen and incredibly exciting. So let someone else do my duties. No, they went back to doing what they were supposed to do. No, these shepherds finished what they were doing. They continued their responsibility of watching the sheep. They did what they were supposed to do. I sometimes, you know, when I was thinking about this, I thought of David who made sure that his sheep were taken care of when he was called to be seen by Samuel when Samuel was going through, um, oh, I forgot David's uh, father's name. Um, when Samuel was walking through looking at all his sons to determine who the next king was and only David was not there. And Samuel requested David to come to his presence. I, I believe it says that David made sure his sheep were taken care of before he went there. David was responsible. And Christians ought to have the highest testimony at work, at home, at play, at rest. We represent Jesus Christ and we should represent him. Knowing Jesus Christ will not reduce your workload or duties. I mean, I, I mean, when I was working on site, just because I was a Christian and just because I, I, I knew I was trusting Christ did not make my workload less at work sometimes, but it helped me to deal with my workload. But knowing Jesus Christ will help us to do a greater job at the task at hand, because without him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do anything that God calls us to do. Amen. What a testimony we can be for Christ if we will ask God to help us, to trust him, to enable us to be better employees, better parents, better spouses, better neighbors, on and on. Another fact that I believe is worthy of note is that the shepherds, when they returned to their duties, they were still glorifying and praising God for what they had seen. But the shepherds didn't stop honoring and praising God when they returned. They were not one-night wonders. They were not undercover Christians, as some would say. They were not flash in the pan Christians. Their devotion to Jesus Christ was continuous, and their devotion to Jesus Christ affected their entire lives. Their faith and praise was not just a monetary decision. It wasn't something that they just did for a while, was something that they continued to do. Their devotion became a way of life. And when you really have been to Jesus and have really come to know Jesus Christ, it is not something that you would be able to hide if you could. It will spill out in everything that you do. We live in a God dishonoring age. We talked about this in my Sunday school class this morning. We talk about the different philosophies that are going on. We, 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 we discuss what is trying to be taught in our public schools. And you know this, and you see it in the news, and, and, and you see the depravity that's going on. And the only chance that this world has is the message of Christ. And what he can do in a person's life. Amen. The work of Jesus Christ in the heart of a person to cause their life to honor and glorify God. Matthew 5 16 says this again, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which was which is in heaven. Mankind, believe it or not, you and I were created. To glorify God. That was our purpose. That's why we were created. 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That means everything you and I do should bring honor 
in glory to God. That's why we were created. This is the duty of man. This is our duty. God, help our lives to do justice as we strive to glorify and please our Heavenly Father. To earnestly strive to be the Christians that God would have us to be. And as I bring this message to a close, there is a Marine recruiter. And this Marine recruiter, recruiter only had one minute left uh, to say what he had to say to this group of people that were possible recruits. And he said to this group, he said, only a small handful of you are capable of being Marines, is what he said to this group. He says, those of you who are, please see me, is what he said. The largest group of recruits came to see that Marine recruiter. Why? Because they had a desire to be a part of that group. God help us to have a desire with all our hearts to be the Christians that God has saved us to be. God help us to desire to be in that elite group of those who desire with all their hearts to be faithful, to believe the truth, share the truth, and live the truth for him for his honor and for his glory. As we bring it close to this year, and I, I cannot believe 2023 is, is almost over. <laughs> it seems like it just started, but it's almost over, right? We know Christ personally. I, 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 I based upon how I've talked with everybody here. I trust that each and every one of you personally know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And I'm hoping as you go into the next year that you will propose through the way we live and through what we say that we'll make it well known that we are children of God and that Christ lives and reigns. Why? So that all the earth will know, like the shepherds did when they proclaimed that they had seen him. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I the message this morning I don't take lightly. The lessons of the shepherds, they saw, they heard what you said, they obeyed. And they immediately obeyed. And when they saw what they were told to see, they proclaimed to others about what they saw. And I pray in our lives that we will be children of obedience to your word and to your prompting, that we will live our lives in such a way that we honor and glorify to you, Lord. Why? Because there's a lost and dying world out there that need you, that need your message. And I pray that each and every one of us here will allow you to use us to bring that message out, like the shepherds did. In your name. in our hymnals to 431. Sing the first, the third, and sixth. 481. Let's sing and sing together. It's just as I am. Yeah. 